Oh. My. God. We're at the NTG concert at Red Rocks. It's really them? I love these guys. OMG, it's their top hit song, Dynamite. Ha 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 ha. I'm. Oh, I'm having a lot of chest pain. Oh, God. Am I having a heart attack? Or it's probably just my angina acting up. Dang. Wish I had something I could take to help me out. Mmm. We've uh, already covered some anti-anginal therapies in our calcium ice cream parlor, where calcium channel blockers slowed the heart and decreased afterload. And at the Beta Blocker Symphony, Beta Blockers slowed down the heart and decreased its contractility, both of which ended up reducing oxygen demand. Both of these medications have a relatively slow onset, however, so aren't helpful for the acute treatment of symptoms. So we need something that can immediately reduce the oxygen demand of the heart. Enter our next agent, nitroglycerin. Yep, you heard right, nitroglycerin. The explosive ingredient in dynamite! Nitroglycerin is in the group of drugs called the nitrates, which all work through the same mechanism. We've symbolized this with a fancy dynamite stage prop. And of course, the band is called NTG. Organic nitrates are metabolized in vascular smooth muscle cells and release the gaseous signaling molecule nitric oxide. So we've got our classic nitric oxide exhaust coming up from the dynamite. Nitric oxide activates guanylyl cyclase in the vascular smooth muscle cell, causing an increase in cyclic GMP. Cyclic GMP is symbolized with a grump, so we've got our grumpy band member looking very attractively dark and brooding. Cyclic GMP affects muscle contraction by decreasing intracellular calcium, resulting in reduced activity of the myosin light chain kinase and activating myosin light chain phosphatase. Together, these promote overall dephosphorylation of the myosin light chain, like the falling P battery here, causing relaxation of the smooth muscles. This dephosphorylation of the myosin light chain results in a loss of squeeze in blood vessels, resulting in marked relaxation of veins and increased venous capacitance. Those blue venous pants? So dilated, right? While veins are the most sensitive vessels to the action of nitrates, higher concentrations can result in a modest large artery dilation, and overall this leads to reduction in systemic vascular resistance, so we've mildly dilated his red sleeves too. So remember, dilated veins is the key here. Venodilation and the increased venous capacitance leads to their major effect on cardiac function. Decreased ventricular preload. Just think of this dried up waterfall. It used to have lots of flow, but after the nitrate activity, its preload of water is just dried up. Remember that preload is the load inside the ventricle that the heart has to move. This dried up pond should help you remember that a decrease in cardiac preload, like the dried up waterfall, means decreased cardiac filling also called the left ventricular end diastolic volume. Less water flowing over the waterfall means the pond just doesn't fill up. This also results in decreased wall stress on the ventricular wall, decreased pulmonary vascular pressure, and overall decreased cardiac output. Afterload, on the other hand, involves peripheral resistance and pressure. What the heart has to pump against we just said that there is a modest effect of nitrates to reduce systemic vascular resistance, like this falling SVR amplifier, which means that nitrates can mildly reduce afterload as well. 